Hello, this is Austin with Josh's Frogs, and today I'm going to be going through what you guys need to be doing to prepare your vivarium for a short vacation. I do want to preface that you should not leave your vivarium for long stretches of time. So if you have a vacation that's going to be lasting for longer than a week, you need to get a pet sitter to come and do some tank maintenance for you. Uh, there's not really a good way to get around that. I will also say that this video is going to be very dart frog centric. There are some things that you can do with some other species of frogs that can stretch that time to get you to a week, but really this is only for dart frogs. Uh, the first thing that you're gonna wanna make sure you have is a misting system or a way to automatically mist your enclosure. So we have a nozzle hooked up here, and this is not obviously hooked up to any sort of water source right now, but this is a Miss King system. We have a couple videos on how to set these up. You can either use this or an Exoterra solo mister for just a single tank, uh, multi misters for multiple tanks. You're gonna need to make sure that your water reservoir is topped off to the very top and that you have properly set up your times to mist with a dart frog enclosure. Usually you're only having to mist if the top is glass a couple of times a week. Mist King does have the capability to do that. Uh, you can dial it in. I want it to mist for 30 seconds on Monday at eight o'clock and then you're good to go and then have another mist go off on a Friday, same amount of time, and then you're pretty much golden. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do to ensure that your frogs are safe and happy while you're away is to make sure that there is proper, um, proper amount of food in the enclosure. And to do that, we like to use microfauna, so springtails. Make sure that your springtail population in your enclosure is visible. You can see that there's springtails hopping around in there when you open up. Uh, I like to go through and kind of gently blow onto the substrate and you can kind of see these white specks hopping around and that's a good indicator that you have a healthy springtail population. Uh, the next ones that you can add are dwarf white isopods. These guys are a little bit larger, or a little bit more of a meal than a springtail is. Um, with these though, you're gonna want to make sure that you're adding them to the substrate layer underneath your sphagnum moss. Um, that's where they're happiest living, and they usually will only come up to eat, um, and that's when your dart frogs will be able to catch them. Uh, the last little trick that I wanna cover, and this one's pretty fun, is you take one of your older fruit fly cultures, um, and you can either gently crack the lid so that it's open just a little bit and try to disturb it as little as possible because as soon as you pick these things up, usually the flies get all excited and they try to climb straight up and leave. And you just set it in your enclosure and you're gonna wanna make sure that this is one of the last things you do before you head out. Now, the fruit flies are going to move around on their own and they'll very slowly start to leave. The reason you wanna do this with an older fruit fly culture is because the population in that culture is going to be smaller and you're not gonna overwhelm your frogs with fruit flies. So I do wanna to touch on some of the other species that you can um, leave. You're definitely going to need a misting system no matter what because frogs need water. Um, desiccation is one of the biggest issues um, that you can see with frogs in most instances. Um, and it's definitely the top priority when you are not physically there to take care of your animals. So again, always make sure that you have your misting system set up properly and it's misting at times. Um, and don't just do this right before you leave. Make sure that it is set up before you leave. You've watched it go off. Uh, because I know I personally have messed this up, set it up, and for whatever reason, I didn't realize that I was having it missed from eight in the morning to 8.30 at night. And so you can definitely flood your tank and get rid of all of your water and it's a disaster and you have to take everything out. So don't do that. Um, most larger frogs that aren't dart frogs, so your white's tree frogs, your Pac-Man frogs, they are, much more of a feast and famine type of animal. So they're going to be gorging themselves as often as you're allowing them to do that. In captivity, most frogs are eating more than they need to. And so a white's tree frog can easily go 
a week without having food added. You definitely want to add crickets right before you leave for those guys or for a Pac-Man frog, say. You can feed them a night crawler or two uh, before you leave. Um, but they're gonna be sitting and digesting those feeder bugs for quite a while and they'll be ready for another meal when you get back, but you definitely don't need to be worrying as much about food as you do about water. So if you had any questions about housing your frogs and making sure that they're safe and sound while you are away uh, for short periods of time, uh, now you know. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible. So we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.